Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening in our community, and today will be no different. I'm always delighted when I get a chance to introduce the listening audience and the viewing audience to people that I think represent the breadth and depth of what the city of Huntsville has to offer. And one of the reasons why I think we live in such a great community. I have some of those people here with me today and I'm ready to introduce them at this time. First of all, I wanna introduce Anna Quirk. She is with us for the very first time and I'm glad to see her here. She's gonna tell us just a little something about why she's here in a moment, but first of all, let me just say welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, glad it's to good, be here. It's good to have you here today. Sitting next to her is her mom, Dr. Margaret Bibb. Okay. Uh, she's a licensed psychologist, and also I see where you are a former vice president of the PTA at AAA, and also pre a, was a president of the LEAP PTA for I two years. I certainly was. So you are a veteran. I was up to my eyebrows in it, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you here today as well. Nice to be here. And uh, I'm going to say my good friend, Dr. Patrick Quirk, who we have a very long history. Have we agreed we're not going to talk much oh, about? You, you can talk about it, that's okay. <laughs> you give me permission to be old. Outstanding. <laughs> We're aging gracefully, though. Yes. Um, aging We're gracefully mature. And wisely. <laughs> Our relationship goes back almost 40 years, and I'm really excited about that because, as you said just before we went on, we kind of look at where we were then and, and how we've come through the journey over life and where we are today, and some of us have landed fairly well. And well for me is that we have a reasonable uh, sense of perspective in life, and uh, our mental health is fairly secure. There I mean, you go. Those yeah. are good, safe statements. Yes, Absolutely. Are. Everything <laughs> else is just gravy. So, <laughs> but it's really good to see you, man. Uh, Dr. Quirk is owner of Longwood Psychological Center and president of the North Alabama Association of Licensed Psychologists. I'm so glad to have you here today. It's good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. All right. Well, the reason we're here today is because there is something that is exciting that's happening in the city of Huntsville every day through the school year. Lots of people know about it, but perhaps there are others that don't. And I thought that you would be the perfect family to discuss this particular thing today. Just this past Christmas, and I understand you had a very unique and special experience with a program called Stars and Clowns at one of our very own schools, AAA, the Academy for Arts and... Academics, Academics and Arts. Academics and Arts. I always mix that up. <laughs> <laughs> Academics and Arts. And uh, this, of course, is a magnet school. And yes. we're going to talk a lot about what magnet schools are in just a few moments and why we have a great value in those particular programs. But I want to talk to you first because you've graduated from school, mm -hmm. from college. Yes. After having gone through this program, mm -hmm. going on to high school, getting your degree, mm -hmm. and then coming back to the community. And one of the first things that you might do over a holiday season is with your sister take some time to go back to a middle school and donate some time. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Tell me about that experience and then we'll talk about why all of that happened. Okay, well my sister and I, Claire, um, both went to AAA uh, in our middle school years and Deborah Fleischman, who is the um, artist in residence there and the director of those programs, is a very dear uh, mentor and friend to both of us, having she was our teacher and then became this eventual kind of surrogate mother to us. She's um, their other mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we went um, uh, on our Christmas breaks that weren't yet the city school's Christmas breaks to, to visit her and to help her out in that very stressful Christmas time. It is um, in many ways in colleges and high schools that um, that Christmas midterms time is crazy, but it ends up being that same way at AAA because of all of the Christmas performances they do with Stars and Clowns and with their musicals. Um, and so we went in and initially weren't sure exactly how much time we were going to put in, but brought her some coffee and said, we're here for whatever you need. And, um, and ended up spending basically every full school day there and two full Saturdays um, helping her uh, manage the kids. There are um, two groups. The Clowns are sixth graders and the Stars is seventh and eighth grade that are auditioned show choirs. Um, and we went in and helped her choreograph things and teach them the music and work on their stage presence and um, spent hours and hours and then stayed with her after the kids would go home um, uh, to look over videos and figure stuff out. But it never, uh, it was never exhaustive or uh, or a burden. It's a it's a treat for us to come home and and have that that world to go into and revisit. And it feels like you never really left. Wow. Now you obviously have a great love for yes. what you do. Yes. And what you've experienced. <clears throat> And I suspect that that love was really nurtured during your time at AAA. 
It absolutely was. Talk a little bit about that experience and why it was so meaningful to you. About the AAA experience? Yes. Okay. Um, I came in as a sixth grader. It's a K through eight school, and uh, I was very nervous because a lot of kids go there all the way through. They call them lifers, K all the way K through eight. And on my first day of sixth grade, I walked in, and uh, this girl immediately. And I was very nervous, very shy kid at that point in time. And this girl immediately said, "Oh, come sit by me. I want to know your name, and I want to know everything about you." And um, and the whole experience is like that. Nobody ever lets anybody feel uh, left out or left behind you are always um, uplifted and it's all about being positive and encouraging of each other and the the arts training obviously um, is was so crucial to so much of who I am uh, and and uh, Debbie Fleischman and everyone else but there is so um, uh, intuitive about kids who have that knack and need to bring it out more um, and my sixth grade year being shy and kind of holding back I didn't originally audition for the show um, and she called my parents at home and said she needs to do this she needs to get involved and she needs to be a part of things and from that moment on it was a life-changing world to live in yeah shy must be in the rearview mirror of your life right now yes <laughs> she got over it got over it pretty fact, quickly I'm thinking about you having majored in theater theater arts yes and and uh, it's like you meet somebody for the first time, it's like, that's just the perfect field. Right. And I could see that you exude this excitement and mm -hmm. energy that just seems to be so fitting of that. So I'm sure Shy is like, that was way oh, in the past. That's way in the past, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bibb, you had this opportunity as a mother right. to see your daughter experience this kind of genesis and right. this, this moment of uh, being exposed to these just incredible opportunities. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about what that was like for you as a parent. Okay. Um, you know, we were always, would be in any setting involved, parents value education and involvement in schools, but in the magnet schools, part of the design of the magnet schools is there is an expectation. There's actually a minimum number of hours you're required to be an involved parent volunteer. And of course, we used to laugh at that minimum number of hours. We hit that in the first month, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, uh, you know, in many other schools, when your child hits middle school, all of a sudden you're sort of cut out. You don't show up and have lunch with them anymore. It's sort of not socially. It's not cool anymore. Not cool anymore, yeah. right. But at AAA and, and, and on through Lee when she was in the high school magnet program there, parents are part of the community. And so I was able to know her friends and their families and be much more connected in that way to her social and academic environment as well as, uh, you know, the performing arts and, and whatnot. So it, it really, it draws families in. It changed our family more than I expected it to even because of that kind of involvement and connection. Yeah, and Dr. Quirk, this of course is obviously a rich cultural experience with many broad and diverse experiences for people from all kinds of backgrounds with multiple interests. Talk about the multicultural value of this kind of an experience that young people who go to magnet schools locally can experience. Let me make a couple comments. I want to give it back to Anna because when we were talking about this, I realized her depth of understanding of what came from this was greater than I ever understood. It really mm. went beyond what I thought. You know, the thing we were looking for when, when Anna was finishing fifth grade and looking at middle school was, you know, we grew up in a situation which where everybody was pretty much alike, and we really were looking for our children to have some introduction to a more diverse world, mm. um, and and know that other people think different ways, and that that's all acceptable. And you want to really be able to be versatile in this world. And so she's made friends uh, from every kind of background and, and maintains a lot of those. But mm -hmm. I'd like to let her pick up on this sub because I thought some of the things she shared were just so insightful about what that did for her in terms of as a functional human being. Yeah, and as you experience life today in what many people call a global society mm -hmm. in which people have to learn how to really work together exactly. with people from different backgrounds. Oh, exactly. Um, yeah, I think it, you know, the word perspective is kind of overused. I think people like to use it a lot, but it's true. It gives being in an environment where not everyone is a carbon copy of you gives you one, a greater perspective on your world uh, and the world and your place in it. Um, but also it teaches you how to be um, adaptive and malleable in your personality and your dealings with people that, you know, you can go, that, that carries on all the way through adult life. You can go into a job interview setting and that person can be very, um, 
uh, maybe you are a very reserved, kind of laid back person and they are very, uh, you know, aggressive, but you can be malleable and adaptive to their personality. Um, it, it allows you to work better with people, to get more jobs, to be more engaging. So it goes beyond that just um, appreciation for um, your world and others' situations, um, but also into really creating that better sense of self and it helps you to, to grow more and be a more well-rounded adult human. Yeah. Um you're a young person, and obviously we live in a society that's still very challenged by many things yes. in terms of human relations and how yes. people uh, choose to live and uh, sometimes, as uh, your dad said, desire to live. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, looking ahead in the future, because obviously, you know, 50 years from now, I probably won't be around. But as a young person experiencing life today with the kinds of experiences that you bring to the table, what do you hope for this world? What do you hope for society and what do you hope for a community like Huntsville that brands itself as a progressive community in terms of being a high-tech uh, community with lots and lots of people from international, from the international community? What are your hopes for this community and the world? I, my biggest hope is that it be something we don't have to talk about. And not in that we are avoiding it, but that it is not an issue that has to be discussed, that we don't have to say, there don't have to be activist uh, organizations, and there don't have to be parades, and there don't have to be, you don't have to have these kind of things, that it would just be something that no one even really thinks about. And maybe maybe that won't happen within 50 years, but maybe within 100 years, you know, maybe within my kids 50 years forward. Um, I, at, I went to Birmingham Southern for my college, and we did, um, uh, a 50 years forward whole thing this past year and did a march um, and went to the 16th Street Baptist Church where the bombings were um, and uh, and it was all about look where we were 50 years ago and look how far things have come but in some ways how far things have not come mm. um, and I my hope is that in these next 50 we can look ahead to that and um, and move past having to have any of these situations. Yeah, I, I think that's more than ideal too because mm -hmm. I think it really comes with a choice. Right. If we decide as a society that that's what we want to do, then yes. we can certainly do it. And we have enough people who have the courage to continue to push forward and to continue to not, as you said, ignore what's going on, but really kind of move towards a time when people can really accept differences. People as people, people and not have people. to say, you know, yeah. black person, white person, not Asian define person, ourselves gay person, by our differences. Person. It can yes. just be yeah. a person. Yeah. We can just be humans. Yes. And, and I love diversity. I love the fact that we're different. But the differences don't equate to deficiencies, which right. oftentimes exactly. is how people see that. And that's unfortunate. And I think it creates a whole world of problems and challenges for us. Uh, we've got just a few minutes left in the broadcast today, but I did want to hear from each of you and maybe like a little closing wrap up comment. You got a lot of people watching today and they are curious about the magnet opportunity and they're kind of like maybe thinking about it and maybe it's not on someone's radar, mm -hmm. but they've now become aware of the fact that there is such an opportunity in Huntsville. Well, there are actually a number of opportunities, and it, you know we talked a lot about AAA specifically and about the performing arts, but there are actually seven different magnet schools essentially in Huntsville, and in many of them there, I think Lehigh has nine or ten mm -hmm. different magnet programs within it. You know, creative writing and 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 visual arts and performing arts and video and, broadcast and journalism. video broadcast journalism, pre-engineer. Right? Pre pre I think pre -engineering. the pre-engineering one has moved century. to New Century, which is housed with Lee. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Williams has or the space the technology, anyway. and uh, there's there's Academy for Science and Foreign Language, mm -hmm. which is the other K through eight school. So there are a, a, a whole plethora of different magnet situations, different schools and different programs within those schools. So I didn't want it to come across as it's only performing arts. That's where we were. Sure. Right. But, and yeah. that's what, AAA was the first mm -hmm. magnet school in Huntsville, one of the first in Alabama in 1984. It opens, it's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are a number of opportunities and I, in my work as a psychologist, I often will refer families into the different programs and so I've been able to see the insides of some of those and I think they all do a marvelous job at, at giving kids a broader perspective, a, a, a greater depth and range of skills for life in general, not just the thing they're going there. If they're doing robotics at AFSL, ASFL, but they're also getting a lot of what she talked about, about just that greater malleability and, and skills development. and I can't overstress the family involvement. It's just a marvelous thing. Yeah, and uh, we've got maybe 30 seconds left, but um, Anna, what would you say to young people out there that are uh, maybe on the edge of, of uh, this opportunity or maybe curious and considering it? 
I would say t two main points that I think people often get concerned about when they don't really fully understand the programs is that your academics are not shifted to the back burner. It is not, you are not going into a conservatory. You're not only going for what you go there for the magnet program. Um, it is the Academy for Academics and Arts. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Lee is the same way. There are, there are all kinds of programs in place that you are held accountable to a, a higher standard even as a magnet student um, that your academics be excellent and you get the most outstanding education in those programs. Um, not not just in your field, and also that you don't have to already know what you want to do with your life. Just because I did a magnet that then I ended up majoring in doesn't mean you have to do that. I have friends who were also in the vocal or theater magnets who now work at law offices or are nurses mm -hmm. or um, it, there are so many diverse career opportunities that can come from this training as a human mm -hmm. and it's not just about a concentrated field already. You don't get robbed of the opportunity to pursue exactly. whatever you're You can still do whatever you want. Yeah, this yeah. just I mean, reminds I think about you. a couple of girls she went to medical, middle, middle school with that are you know going to medical school now. So it's yeah. just a real, uh, very diverse. And one of the things Anna said was that you know, for instance, for the folks like the, the engineering magnet kids, um, that those kids really have a like most punk high level engineering. This, this, is, this is where you go for a career, you get a big step up. And when you enter your career, you really are ahead of the game. Right. And, and what preparation? What better preparation can a person have than to be exposed to so many different kinds of things exactly. as they anticipate moving out? Anna Quirk, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you so Dr. much, Dr. Margaret Bibb. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And my friend, Dr. Patrick Quirk, mm -hmm. how are you? I am good. Thank you. Good. <laughs> what a great show. What a great opportunity to talk to each of you. And what a great opportunity for those that have listened today to find out so much more about magnet schools. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank, thank you, you for so having much, Jenny. All right. We thank you for being a part of our broadcast also. We hope that you'll tune in for our next edition of Impact. In the meantime, we hope that you have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you soon.